I'd say the age of consultants, probably there's a few people um, it could be put into doing a history of it, but um, it used to be San Francisco politics were run by uh, the machines. Sure. And consultants weren't quite as important. The machine that played the game, made the deals, and decided everything. And sometimes there were a couple of different parties that had their own machines and they fought, but basically it was machine run. And then there were so many sort of nonpartisan business mayors like, uh, oh, Almer Robertson, George Christopher, uh, those types. And then, <coughs> around the time of uh, George Moscone coming into office, she started with the rise of consultants. And they've been very strong ever since. They're dominating ballot issues. And the mayoral races, and now they're all over these uh, individual little supervisor races in each tiny district. Uh, which incidentally were created for, among other reasons, to uh, uh, save money because by not having a runoff, you didn't go to the expense of having a runoff and it was a smaller area. Therefore, people didn't have to contribute that much money for the candidate to. Well, uh, no sooner than a, a couple of shots at district elections, more money is now spent politically on each district election. When you put them all together, it's one and a half times mm -hmm. the money used to be spent on citywide races for mm -hmm. supervisors. Mm -hmm. So forget that reason. But that's not our discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Clint Riley really, I'd say, started the modern period of that. He pioneered uh, taking voter rolls and putting them on uh, computers. And from that, um, forging lists for statewide direct mail. Okay. Uh, he took the whole state and computerized it and um, ran some very successful monetarily for him. Most of them lost, but they were huge campaigns for uh, not very nice people from a, a progressive perspective, the insurance companies, et cetera. They were anti-consumer uh, statewide these were the Yeah, the these were statewide campaigns for propositions. Yeah, that was Clint. But he pioneered the system of getting everybody's name on the voter yeah, rolls, direct mail. finding out how to get it for direct mail, and uh, that led to uh, making it much easier for phone banking, not that he started phone banking, that had been done. But it all kind of fit together, so he really had an operation. And then he parenthetically had a uh, wonderful money-making operation called the Democratic Slate Card. And he ran that in, I think, every county in the state. It was not the uh, official Democratic Party in each county slate card. It was something called the Democratic Party slate card. And he sort of bankrolled that and made, already before he opened the gate, made a ton of money by having his statewide clients front the bill for him and sending him to each county to push their propositions. And then he uh, would sell, uh, you know, statewide candidates, rivals for governor, lieutenant governor, insurance, whatever, all those offices. Uh, and then he'd um, go to the, uh, send people to each county in the state, to all the local people running for offices, hmm. and the propositions be they, and say, hey, we got the slate cards going to everybody, all these, look at it, right. all the national, look at the stuff that's in it. Um, you, better, you better buy some space on this or you're not going to be in it. Everybody had to buy in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, wow. I mean, he made you know, three or four or five times over the cost of it before uh, anything out the gate. And that went on for a period of years, maybe a decade. So we're talking about the 80s. Yeah, it was mostly, it was very influential in the 80s because there was a void. The, the Republican Party in the 1980s sued uh, in federal court and uh, <coughs> against the Democratic Party endorsing in local races. Oh, really? I, yeah. Oh, okay. And that led to a, uh, uh -huh. uh, cessation of endorsement in local races uh -huh. by the party structures. Okay. Oh, okay. Because the Republicans didn't want them endorsing. All came out of San Francisco. They didn't want them endorsing because there were so damn many Democrats. Right. Right, right. <laughs> so that, that didn't do the Republicans any good. Uh -huh. So they said, maybe we can block them uh -huh. from being able to endorse uh -huh. in the name of the Democrats. And that lasted t about 10 years. Okay, I didn't. Until I didn't. about the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then there was a Supreme Court uh, ruling, finally. Mm. It was, you know, decided here and appealed, and the 
for, it went on for a good 10 years, almost all the 80s. Uh, and during that period, Clint entered the fray with the Democratic slate card. And then he continued to do it for a while, but then everybody started to get pissed off at him and say, wait a minute, this is not the official Democratic mm -hmm. Party slate card. What mm -hmm. is this? This is a phony, mm -hmm. et cetera. So finally that mm -hmm. petered out. But during that time, he made a fortune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Made a fortune. 